to go. Good morning, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, very good morning, everyone. I'll be discussing my free paper to establish the relationship between the structural and functional parameters in idiopathic intracranial hypertension. Oh, sorry, it's not me. Just a second. You go to the left hand corner where you have the forward okay. and backward indication, then you please go and click there. Okay. Thank you. Sir. Don't, don't click on the laptop. Uh, uh, there wasn't any financial interest in the context of the subject of this presentation. So IH is a condition which is characterized by elevated intracranial pressure and is a diagnosis of exclusion. The major morbidity of IH is visual impairment, usually reversible if it is treated timely. However, 40% of the cases may show permanent visual loss. Because of the increase in the global prevalence of obesity, there has been an associated increase in IIH. Therefore, it necessitates the evidence-based diagnostic tools and treatment strategies. Now, OCT can help in IIH to differentiate papilledema from pseudopapilledema, monitoring the progression or resolution of the papilledema, and also to determine the cause of loss of vision. The aim of our study was to quantify the relationship between the optic nerve head tomography, that is the structural parameters, with visual functional parameters in early and established cases of papilledema in IH at presentation and at six months follow-up. Ethics Committee approval was taken and it was a longitudinal prospective study which was performed between December 2017 to February 2019. So IH patients were recruited from the neuroophthalmology clinic and neurology and ophthalmology OPD. Chronic papilledema patients were excluded. 27 patients who underwent medical management and weight loss were included in the analysis and patients who underwent ONSF were excluded from the analysis. Uh, IH patients diagnosed on basis of modified anti criteria, early and established papilledema, and age more than equals to 18 years were included in the study. And patients who didn't give consent, evidence of hydrocephalus or space occupying lesions on MRI, any pre existing optic neuropathies, and patients with chronic and atrophic papilledema were excluded from the study. The structural parameters were analyzed based on three scans on OCT. The optic disc scan, which evaluated the RNFL thickness, the macular scan, which evaluated the GCL IPL complex, and the five line raster scan, which evaluated the optic disc height. The functional parameters were best corrected visual acuity, color vision, contrast, visual field charting, VR, and multifocal electroretinogram. All the patients received oral acetazolamide in dosage accordance to the requirement. Patients were followed up at six weekly interval for six months. Appropriate statistical analysis was done and p-value less than equals to 0.05 was considered significant. Coming to the results, 80% of the cases were female and 20% were male. The mean age of the patients was, was uh, 31 plus minus 7.3 years. 90.7% patients had headache as the most common symptom and mean duration of symptoms was four and a half months. The other systemic comorbidities were PCOD, hypothyroidism, and weight gain within the past one year. Uh, the mean CSA pressure was 28.27 millimeter of mercury, and all the patients had uh, partial empty cell on MRI. 50% of the patients had transverse sinus stenosis on MRV. Now, there was a statistically significant decline in the thickness of the optic disc height and the RNFL over the six months. However, GCL had a statistically significant improvement in the thickness in the first six weeks, followed by no such statistically significant changes. The functional parameters also showed a statistically significant improvement over the six months. Now, all the three structural parameters had a statistically significant correlation with the functional parameters at baseline. However, at six months, RNFL did not show any statistically significant correlation with any of the functional parameters at six months. In order to understand the role of structural parameters to predict the final visual outcome, a correlation between the two was obtained. So the RNFL at baseline did not show any statistically significant correlation with the final functional parameters at six months. Interestingly, GCL IPL when uh, the GCL IPL values at six weeks had a statistically significant correlation with the uh, fin final functional parameters, and it was better and more stronger than that noted with the baseline values. This is a graphical representation of the structural uh, parameters at baseline with the final functional parameters. Now coming to the discussion, all patients had increased optic disc height and RNFL thickness at presentation. The proprietary algorithms to measure GCL IPL thickness in presence of significant optic nerve head swelling may result in erroneous appearance of GCL IPL thinning. In our patients also, patients who had significant disc edema revealed erroneous thinning of GCL IPL at presentation. Therefore, the IOA 3D segmentation protocol is better to measure the GCL IPL. However, it requires superior technical skill and is time consuming. The baseline GCL IPL and the optic disc height values showed a significant correlation with the final functional parameters in our study. However, baseline RNFL thickness did not show a statistically significant correlation with any of the final visual outcomes. So in order to conclude, it is important to identify the artifacts in the GCL IPL measurements, particularly in presence of disc edema. In the setting of severe papilledema, RNFL can misguide the prognosis. Therefore, despite the limitations, the GCL IPL thickness can be a 
valuable tool for an objective evaluation of the integrity of the optic nerve in patients with IIH. And optic disc height may be used as an alternative or in combination with GCL IPM in these cases. Thank you. Dr. Uh, Davin, you have to un unmute yourself, I think so. Sorry. Thank you, Masumi. Uh, any questions from uh, Dr. Sunita, Dr. Kumudini? Would you like to ask him? Yeah, yesterday we have asked questions to her. Mm. What did you ask her? Because I wasn't there so far. Yeah, I just said, I just asked her, key, why do you th find that GCIPL is correlating more to the functional outcome than yes. RNFL? What is the reason yes. for that? What was the answer, Masumi, to that? Because I had the same question. <laughs> oh, you had the same? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yes, sir. The, actually, ma'am also gave me a, quite a good in, input and it was the, because of the change in the diameter of the ganglion cells and the difference in the diameter of the ganglion cells and the RNFL and therefore the subtle changes will be better represented uh, by the ganglion cell layer changes. Okay. We won't be able to be appreciated with the RNFL. Oh, okay. Uh, I have a question. Yes, you yes. included uh, early patients, early yes. papilledema. Yes, ma'am. So what uh, visual functions were like altered uh, which improved at six months because uh, I, I uh, we know that papilledema doesn't, uh, you know, even the contrast sensitivity doesn't get too much affected in papilledema. So what changed? I couldn't understand that part. You kept saying there's a correlation between the uh, GPL, uh, the, the parameter which you're studying versus the visual function. Yes, Can you just elaborate on that? Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, uh, interestingly, in our patients, first of all, the mean duration of symptoms was also four and a half months when the patient presented to us. And uh, in all our patients, uh, ma'am, I can show you that there was a change in the functional parameters over six months, and the improvement was statistically significant. Though it's true that the contrast sensitivity at baseline wasn't very low, but ma'am, all our patients had uh, at the range of 1.2 to 1.4, which at the end uh, improved to 1.65 or more than that. So uh, there was, and the major difference, uh, the statistically significant correlation was mainly with mean deviation, contrast sensitivity. Uh, these were the two main functional parameters with, with uh, which we noted the major correlation. Now my point is then your title says early papilledema. Mm. So if it is four months already, then it is not truly early papilledema. Yes, ma'am. So uh, you have you know, so to be a little careful because it's that's why when you're following and that's the case that you're presenting. This is, and the is really benefits for. So just, just to, okay. I think that you have to be a little careful how you title the paper. Okay. I think our time is up. So uh, thank you very much, Mausumi.